Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Kanisha St. Louis. In the headlines, principals called to embrace change for quality education, Ministry of Health drafts legislation against effects of tobacco use, and the Ministry of Education plans to train special education teachers in motion. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. I had a bleeding disorder that I did not know about, and they had to be transfusing me continuously. I got 56 units. Being there at the blood bank, I was like, yo, I'm actually saving someone's life. You never know when you can go. Give blood. I have done it, and believe it or not, it don't hurt. I won't be scared. I'll give. <laughs> you know you're going to give blood. I'll make sure she does. Sit down at the blood bank in a comfortable environment for 45 minutes. Helping people. You are stimulating your body to make brand new cells. You get free cookies, you get juice. Glad to know your blood group. Feels good. I felt as a better person. It's a good thing to be alive. And I can thank God that I'm there and I'm enjoying life. Thanks for staying with us. Principals of primary and secondary schools have been encouraged to assist the Ministry of Education in achieving the goal set for the development of the nation's human resource capacity by embracing change. The Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter Seja, told school principals that it is their responsibility to cultivate the right environment for effective learning and teaching to help ensure that each child succeeds. However, he says to achieve this, they must embrace change and become more innovative. Honorable Seja was addressing the principal's meeting for the 2017-2018 academic year at the Fortier Hotel on Friday. In order to be an effective leader, you must consider being an agent of change. And change, most times, does not come easy. Therefore, in a forever changing environment, in an age of innovation and technology, no longer can we depend on the outdated ways that we used before. It is okay to adapt to the changing needs of your students. You must be willing to take your school into new frontiers of teaching and learning. The Honorable Education Minister says one of the ways to improve teaching and learning is to utilize computers which are available at schools. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Chandler Hyacinth, also told the principals that systems at the schools are ripe for change. Echoing the sentiments of the Honorable Education Minister, she told principals that they should embrace change and engage in lifelong learning in order to remain relevant. Our systems at our school is ripe for change, especially with technology. Use technology as a teaching tool to effect change. We are the drivers for change and success in our schools. As the pace of change continues to accelerate, I don't need to tell you that career trajectories are changing too. The old way of starting a job and staying in the same place all your life is not what you should expect. In our times of constant change, this always out with yesterday's recycling, we have to adjust. We have to be constantly learning and you must have a mindset of lifelong learning. This is an increasingly valuable attribute because this is a mindset that enables us to adapt to change, to remain competitive and relevant. Meantime, a Chief Education Officer Melinda Fountain says all schools must focus on the quality of education delivered. Here in Dominica, we believe that if we are to realize a modern, prosperous Dominica, we must adopt a culture that focuses on quality for effectiveness. In effect, whatever we do, we must do it well so that we can realize our vision of each child succeeds. We will not be leaving it to chance. 
And so we will be putting all the structures in place to ensure that our plans are successfully implemented. Meantime, the Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter Seja, has revealed that the Ministry of Education has begun to identify teachers who will be trained to deliver education to children with special needs. Honorable Seja was addressing primary and secondary school principals at the 2017 principals meeting at the Fortin Hotel on Friday. The Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, in his 2017-2018 budget address, spoke of government's intention to improve the delivery of education for special needs children as government continues to improve universal education access to quality education. My ministry welcomes this new policy direction. And we have already put plans in place that will help us to identify teachers who are most suitable for further studies in special education and place these teachers in universities within the coming months. Honorable Seja added that through the Ministry of Education's Special Education Office, the ministry has also identified students with special needs ranging from different types of learning disabilities to behavioral problems and has provided intervention and support. The government recognized the need to upgrade and increase the services provided and therefore allocations in the most recent budget will meet a growing need to improve on these services for children with special education needs, integrating them into the regular school as far as practically possible, and also providing support to their parents and caregivers so that they too understand the needs of their children and can care for them in a most meaningful way. Honorable Seja called on principals to come on board as government focuses on improving access to education for challenged students. In more news, the Ministry of Health is making strides with a proposal geared at protecting nationals and visitors alike from the harmful effects of tobacco smoke. That announcement came from the Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health, Dr. David Johnson. For the drafting of this legislation, the Ministry enlisted assistance from the Pan American Health Organization. With technical assistance from the Pan American Health Organization, the Ministry is in the process of developing drafting instructions for submission to the Office of the Attorney General Chambers for implementing the cabinet decision. So there is a cabinet decision to enact legislation for the protection of Dominican public and visitors from the harmful effects of tobacco smoke. Dr. Johnson was addressing the official launching ceremony of Caribbean Wellness Day to be recognized on September 9th. In addition to his announcement, Dr. Johnson called for the collaboration of the public and private sectors to accomplish the health goals of Dominica. In moving forward, in moving forward, we have to continue to strengthen the collaboration between the public and the private sector in order to improve the health of the nation. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. I believe in the natural order of things. I believe in the, in the harmony of things. You know, in everything we do, we have to keep it natural. I've been doing farming for now over a decade. My day is very hectic, but I make it light, you know, because I enjoy what I do. I enjoy producing the best quality goods and to make sure that the people that receive it, they receive the best that they can ever get. Right from the farm, everything that I grow, I process them back into the farm so that these same things that grow in the farm is what protects the farm. Tourism is my business, you know, it's not just dealing with the foreigners that come in, but it's preparing those things that when they come, they can feel and taste the difference in coming to this exotic island. And it starts with the farmer, because we provide the things that they eat, that they taste, that they drink. 
I believe in my heart that it's my responsibility to provide quality. My name is Tony Alves and tourism is my business. Welcome back. The efforts of government through the Ministry of Health to provide easily accessible health care are being applauded by the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. David Johnson. According to records, 7% of Dominica's gross domestic profit counts for health care. A large percentage of this cost is usually dedicated to secondary and tertiary level care for chronic non-communicable diseases. Dr. Johnson says that while Dominica's health sector may face some challenges, the policies of government certainly facilitate affordable health care. Dominica, like other countries in the world, including the most developed countries, and I repeat, including the most developed countries, is faced with the challenge of ensuring that the health sector is adequately financed and patients and their families are protected from financial catastrophe or impoverishment when they become ill. Over the years, however, I have become increasingly convinced that the policies of government are aimed at ensuring that the persons are protected from financial catastrophe due to ill health and that no one is denied. No one is denied the health care in Dominica because of his or her inability to pay. He highlighted the government's financial support in developing the medical resources as evidence of government's interest in the wellness of Dominicans. Evidence of the thrust in health is reflected in the huge investment in health infrastructure, human resource for health, as well as new medical technology and drugs. An increase of over 70 percent, five million dollars in this budget, this year budget, for purchasing drugs is commendable and will redound in the benefit of thousands of patients in Dominica. And I think we deserve to give government a hand of applause for this. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. In more news, the Rotary Club of Dominica is making a significant contribution to upgrade libraries in primary schools across the island. On Friday, Rotarian Almer Irish donated a library books to upgrade a number of primary school libraries on island. Irish explained at the 2017 Principals Meeting that following Tropical Storm Erica, the Rotary Club received $34,000 from the Anglican Relief Fund for the club's library project. At that time, funds were already received or identified for the Pitted Savan Multipurpose Room and the Coolibistry and Campbell School Libraries. As a result, a decision was taken to purchase library material with the funds to assist more schools. The Ministry of Education and the American NGO Hands Across the Sea conducted a needs assessment to determine which school libraries needed assistance. At the end of the exercise, 21 schools were identified as needing assistance based on the size of the school and their current library stock. 24,515 books were purchased and are in Dominica and will be delivered to these schools. In addition, the club refurbished a brand new library for the Mont Prosper School and upgraded the library at the Clifton and the W.S. Stevens Primary Schools. The club also took the opportunity to launch two initiatives as it recognizes September as a Rotary International New Generation and a Literacy Month. The first is a secondary school quiz competition and the second is a literacy enhancement project which is a new initiative. The aim of this project is to form a literacy clubs and undertake other literacy activities to promote reading among primary school students. Finally, this news time, Hurricane Jose has been upgraded to a Category 4 storm. At 11 a.m. on Friday, Jose was located near latitude 16.3 degrees north and longitude 57.1 degrees west, or about 415 miles east-southeast of the northern Leeward Islands. Jose is moving towards the west-northwest near 18 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. 
Nationals in Dominica are advised to monitor the progress of Hurricane Jose and to make the necessary preparations as the system moves closer to the Leeward Islands. The concern for Dominica at this time is possible impacts associated with the feeder bands and rough seas due to Hurricane Jose. Current projection is for an increase in cloudiness, showers and thunderstorms which could be moderate to heavy at times and gusty winds. By this afternoon and particularly Saturday, a flood watch of or warning may be issued for Dominica as the storm progresses. Rough seas are expected during the next 24 hours with the waves peaking near 14 feet. A small craft warning and a high surf advisory is now in effect for Dominica as of 12 noon on Friday. All users of sea and persons living near the coast are advised to take all necessary precautions to protect life and property. I believe in the natural order of things. I believe in the, in the harmony of things. You know, in everything we do, we have to keep it natural. I've been doing farming for now over a decade. My day is very hectic, but I make it light, you know, because I enjoy what I do. I enjoy producing the best quality goods and to make sure that the people that receive it, they receive the best that they can ever get. Right from the farm, everything that I grow, I process them back into the farm so that the same things that grow in the farm is what protects the farm. Tourism is my business, you know, it's not just dealing with the foreigners that come in, but it's preparing those things that when they come, they can feel and taste the difference in coming to this exotic island. And it starts with the farmer, because we provide the things that they eat, that they taste, that they drink. I believe in my heart that it's my responsibility to provide quality. My name is Tony Alves, and tourism is my business. Here are some tips to protect yourself and family after a hurricane. Seek medical attention at first aid stations, hospitals or clinics for persons injured during the storm. Do not touch loose or dangling electrical wires. Report those to power companies, the nearest police station or village council. And finally, report broken sewer or main water lines directly to the village council, the public works department or water resources for your area. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on the past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Kadesha Sedwi. Thanks for watching and do have a great weekend.